So the tools that we're gonna to need to have for this job are gonna be a pair of tin snips to be able to open up uh, the metal banding straps that the boxes are gonna come shipped in. You're gonna need a utility knife to be able to cut some of these cardboard boxes open. Makes it a lot easier having a utility knife. You're gonna need uh, a power bit driver works best, but if all you have is a screwdriver, that will work, but I would recommend a power bit driver uh, with a, a Phillips head screw. You're also gonna need a socket set a couple different sizes are really nice to have to be able to attach the, uh, the gussets to the legs. Um, it would also be nice to have a pair of uh, pliers or an adjustable end wrench uh, for the, the legs depending on whether or not you have um, uh, just a standard leg that attaches with a rubber pad on the bottom of it to each one of the legs or you have maybe a roller. Some of them will have wheels attached to them so you can move the room. Uh, around and a, uh, a white rubber mallet works really good to be able to attach the cover over the J track for the curtains. We unpack, we check for any kind of damage, make sure that all the components are, are there. There should be a uh, checklist in the instruction manual that gives you uh, all the numbers of the parts and pieces, for instance, nuts, bolts, washers, screws, um, all the exclusions that are used for the structure the vinyl curtains for the softball system, the ceiling components, uh, the grid, uh, the HEPA filters and lights. Yeah, everything is already pre-drilled. Uh, insofar as the, the uh, gussets are concerned, a socket set works perfectly to attach the, uh, the gussets. Um, it just has a hex screw uh, with a washer and a star washer that attaches those together. The, um, uh, the J-Track attaches with just a machine screw, so a bit driver or a screwdriver work as well, but usually a bit driver works extremely well. There should be no drilling or cutting of any of the material. If everything is uh, built correctly, it'll go together much like an erector set. Um, if you ever built one of those as a child growing up, uh, this is just a large erector set. When you're handling these, even though they are powder coated, and it's, they do a great job of powder coating these, it's very, very tough and durable. It's best that if you do have to lay the, especially the ceiling exclusions on the ground, we want to turn those upside down so that either, either if you are going to have it facing down where the, the uh, grid is actually touching the ground, put something on the surface of the, of the ground to keep it from getting scratched. Otherwise, flip it over and have it upside down as you're setting everything up. But the paint is very durable. The, the powder coat holds up really well. But the more you do to protect it, the, the better off it's going to be in the end. We'll attach uh, two legs to one to one gusset. Uh, if this is going to be the outside framework for the for the system, and then we'll attach another gusset to another leg, and then another exclusion that attaches basically like the shape of an L uh, to the other exclusion, so you can begin your, your building your system. You have to have at least the ability to have the thing free stand. And so if once you get that L shape built, then the system can be free, free stood, and then from there, build it out. The legs and the gussets are gonna go first, then the exclusions for the ceiling system. Then there's gonna be some exclusions or support that go across each of the outside uh, exclusions that are on attached to the legs. And those are used for the ceiling system, for the T-grid. The T-grid then attaches to those exclusions for our ceiling system. The electrician's responsibility will, to, will be to bring the main power supply to the control panel. There will be a control panel that attaches to the outside of the room that will have the switches for the lights and the switches for the HEPA filters, of course, depending on how many modules you have. Uh, you have usually a rheostat that controls the speed of the HEPA filters uh, for dialing down or uh, the airflow for each of the HEPAs. Um, but again, that depends on how many HEPAs you have in the room. There is a point in the process where you're going to have to measure uh, the extrusions that go across the top of the ceiling system where the, where the grid goes, there's the four foot long grid. And on those extrusions you need to mark every 24 inches uh, for that grid to be put into place. 
Sometimes we find that it's better to mark that extrusion on the ground before you put it up, uh, just so you, you don't have to worry about getting up there with a tape measure and marking that up from, from a ladder. So it's a lot easier to do that on the ground. And if you need any reference to where those marks go, you can refer back to the instruction manual. Well, after the T-grid's on, the extrusions, uh, both the grid and the extrusion have to be gasketed. That's to create an airtight seal, so when the, when the HEPA filters and the lights are attached to the top of the grid, uh, you don't allow any dirty air to enter the space. So, uh, the first thing after the gasketing is done is to put the HEPA filters. We usually put the HEPA filters up first. That's the largest and heaviest item that goes on the ceiling. Usually you want to attach the gasket about at the center point of the grid. So you have the L shape of the grid. And so you wouldn't want to attach that gasket right down the center. The other thing you don't want to do is stretch that. The gasket is very pliable. So if you, you don't, and you don't want to remove the paper ahead of time. So you lay it out with the paper on it and you stretch it across the grid, attaching it, and then pulling the paper afterwards after you get each section uh, gasketed. Yeah, the other part of this uh, system that's very delicate is the face of the HEPA filters. First of all, the HEPA filters, they have a HEPA filter that's built into the fan filter unit uh, that has to be protected from shock and from uh, any sharp objects or even from blunt trauma. So it's best when you're handling the HEPA to hold the HEPA filters from the outside of the box and not from the face of the filter. There are times where you are gonna have to, when you're going over the grid, Touch the face of the filters, there's almost no way of getting around that, but if you have to do that, and try not to do that at all if you can avoid it, but if you do have to do it, make sure you palm the face of the filter and towards the outside of the frame of the filter itself, so that you're not putting your fingers in one spot or a thumb in one spot and pressing through. Once that filter is damaged, it's no longer any good. The HEPAs and the lights will go up, will attach the electrical components, which are basically a relock. They just snap together. Once those are in place, uh, then we will put up the ceiling tile. Uh, once the ceiling tile is in place uh, and we have the full system, uh, the ceiling system done, then we're going to attach the uh, vinyl curtain to the exterior of the, the room. Uh, once the unit's uh, set up and once the electrical is hooked, we'll usually do a, run a test to make sure that all the HEPAs are functioning. Uh, there's a pre-filter that goes on top of the HEPA filter and it's going to come with the HEPA units. We want to make sure that that pre-filter has uh, has been put in the right position because there's an arrow on the pre-filter uh, that will show you what direction the airflow is and it will be basically down. So you're going to want to set that where the arrow on the pre-filter is facing down. Those will go in the HEPA filters uh, once the HEPA filters are in place. Uh, and again, make sure those are in before you turn the unit on to test it. And you're going to want to run a test on the lights and all the HEPAs to make sure they're operating correctly. JTRAC gets attached with machine, with machine screws to the side of the extrusion. It's the second, there's two notches on the top of the extrusion. It's the second notch down. The screw goes into that. It's basically a threaded notch, and that goes into that uh, all the way around the perimeter of the extrusion. And then from there, you take the curtain, and the curtain just attaches. There's a, um, a J-hook. There's on the, on the track itself, it comes up, and on the curtain, it goes down. And so it just attaches that. Once it's on there and we have the curtain attached all the way around the room, then there's a cover, a base cover that goes over and gets attached by, you can either use your hand, what works best is a rubber mallet, a white rubber mallet, so it doesn't make any marks on the material, and you just hammer that down all the way around the room to, to tie the curtain in place. The electrician comes in, runs their main power supply to the, to the unit, and in this case, the one that we built did in, in New York, that actually had a, uh, uh, a power cord. So all the electrician I had to do was to have the outlet set up for a 220, and then we just attached the control panel right to the outlets. Normally in a vinyl uh, or, or softball room with vinyl curtains, it's gonna have a doorway, and they're gonna be eight inch wide strips, normally eight inch wide strips. And those strips are just basically overlapping. You just overlap uh, for those doors. For the curtains themselves, as you put those up around the room, they're just gonna, the, the top of the J-Track just busts right together. There's a little bit of overlap, usually four to six inches of overlap of curtain between each one of the curtains as you install it. And the nice thing about these rooms too is, 
if your uh, process grows, the room can grow with that process. You can easily remove one portion of curtain, add some more extrusions, some more legs, add some more heifers and lights, and you can you can keep going whatever direction you need to go to build your to build your room out.